Jim, I mean, maybe uh, Steve, I don't know, do we ever actually have a sit down occasionally with, with IPAS and say, you know, we want to give you some, some issues within our district that we would like for you to do some research on, uh, if, if at all possible, and, ha and have some dialogue with these folks and tell them what the issues are. And, and I mean, I think there's, uh, there's ag communities that would be glad to help fund some of these kinds of things that would help us in the long run. But if they, if, I just wonder if our research community knows our issues, if, you know, and they really got a good grip on them. And do they, if they have these conversations like we're having here today and like you know, Carl just expressed, it, that gives them some food for thought. Um, I'll tell you something else that, that we did in industry. I mean, between us and DEP, you know, if we set aside two, three hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars and, and pointed it toward a specific item and said we're willing to fund some graduate research, you can get some people's attention with not a whole lot of money in today's. Well, I, I agree, and I think that that's, you know, that's kind of like DEP's BMAP money. I mean, I think that you know, us or legislature or whoever, we could. If they had the right uh, research, you know, that would solve some issues that we have in our district, that would be that would be money well spent, uh, you know, to help them uh, do that research. I, I just wonder if we have in that dialogue. We didn't. That's probably a no. Well, <laughs> the karst mapping modeling piece, not with uh, IPAS so much. Um, they were included in our SRP, you know. But I was sitting, I was thinking I was from the standpoint of we, we've got a nutrient problem, okay? Here's, show them this and say, you know, what kind of research, what could we do? Can, can we have some of your guys do a think tank that, that think about, you know, options that we may have that you, we might do some research on to, to mitigate some of our problems. I'll tell you who I would have, I mean, I had this conversation with Dr. Wendy Graham, who's the head of the Water Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I was spent all day on Friday with her and, and But I see, and I think those are the wrong people, personally. She's I, IFAS. Well, she's, I understand, I, I don't has, mean that, I don't mean has, that, but I mean it's, it, you have to get to the people, you've got to change the way that the farmer, I'll say, without the better, is doing business, and we got to give them good reasons to. And I, and I, you know, we, and it needs to fit within their, you know, within their livelihood and, and make sense. And I think, it, you know, is it a chemical? Problem? Is is there something else? Can we develop a new? Uh, can we use more organic nitrates that would cause less problems? Well, you know, I don't know what the answer is, but I think there's a lot of smart people need to be thinking uh, along these lines. Um, and, I, and I know the water, I'm just saying, I'm not saying don't have those conversations with water folks, but I think to really get something done, you got to back up to the source. And that's where you have to start to concern. Because you can't go forward from there and, and really get anything done. You gotta back up and get these people engaged to, to make a change. Just so you know, sir, there, um, some of the stuff that's ongoing right now in, in conjunction with IFAS and DEP, we're working up at Stony Farms, um, we're talking about from uh, UF IFAS, you know, it's doing a lot of work on, on nutrient transport and pick up by the crops to try, you know, this is, this is one of the big issues we have, you know, in the, in the system. We don't really know when we apply X, you know, at what time do you need to apply X and the crop uses, let's say, a half X, you know, then half of that X is, is goes into the system. Well, you know, to the to the grower, he just wasted half his money because you know he's not. It's no use. He might as well throw money on the ground. So trying to trying to deliver, and that's kind of ties back into the fertigation thing. Trying to deliver the optimum, the optimum quantity at the optimum time for the appropriate crop, and that you know that changes by crop. You know, which changes throughout the year. But there are there are efforts going on along those lines. We're also and there's been a lots of research done there. And right. I mean, I think we've made some tremendous strides. I mean, if you look at the amount of fertilization, we, we, and that's <coughs> where, where we debated, if you look at the amount of fertilizer that was used in this district versus now, we've definitely come down. We've right. basically got better technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're doing better. 
Right. I just think we need to look at other alternatives too, all, you know, that may help us with this. Because I don't think there's not going to be one silver bullet that you know all of a sudden we find and this is going to fix it all. So, and and we're also working down in the uh, on the south side of the Santa Fe with a project where we're installing uh, real time. Uh, rainfall monitors so that we can relate rainfall and essentially like in storm water, the first flush of a, of a lot of folks down there dry dry crops you know, use center pivots. So when they put on fertilizer or supposed to get a rain, so they get a flush. So we're trying to correlate those rainfall events to then where it impacts the monitoring well for your setup downstream from those to see, okay, what happens? You know, because a lot of your questions, we don't know what happens. We don't know the, the mechanics of the system. We know it gets there, you know, we're not really sure how fast or in what in what concentrations. So there there are some efforts underway, but and you are right, I mean there needs to probably be, you know, much more dialogue. But that's that's part of what ideally in you know, a VMAP process you can try to get people to come to their senses and say, okay, what can we be doing? I think it's a great program. Uh, I think absolutely. Um, I'm all for it. I just I think it we might need to throw down a gauntlet a little bit more than we have to reach out a little further. And so then just to uh, just to finish up and then we take whatever other questions you have. The, the process, you know, uh, I'm briefing y'all on it, a little bit of a workshop here. We'll probably have a, we had a public meeting way back in, I think 2008, sometime that kicked the entire process off me with this I don't even remember. And we went off and did the Santa Fe VMAP and all so we'll come back and do it sometime in late October and we haven't really set that date yet. It might end up being early November, the official public meeting. And then I've already met with the county administrators in all the in all the counties along the Stony River. And we realized that we need to have workshops, uh, much like this with new commissioners. A lot of new commissioners are likely to be elected. You know, they need to know not just about the VMAP process, but I've I've talked to Dr. Shortell, you know, they need to they need to understand what the water management district's doing, you know, what the what the SRP is doing, and what the Farm Farm Bureau is doing. So, you know, how, how that all how that all fits together and how that works together. So those are probably happening, you know, you know, <coughs> public meetings in January, February, and likewise have some various grower association meetings, you know, in January, February timeframe to try to get out the folks that are, that are doing the work to let them understand what it is that needs to be done. You know, and to close, I mean, you know, you, I think you touched on it, you know. Hey, we can't do this by ourselves. I mean, we need, you know, we rely heavily on, on the folks here at the Water Management District, especially rely on the folks at the Sequoia River Partnership. You know, the Florida Farm Bureau is, is behind this process. They understand stuff needs to be done, so they help however they can. You know, uh, talk with Ray, you know, in Southeast Melt, you know, get the, get the message out to their folks. Uh, and that the environmental groups, you know, and the counties and municipalities, it's everybody, everybody has to want to do something so that we can actually achieve change. You know, there is no one, as you pointed out, there is no one solution. You know, it's a whole lot of little ones. So, you know, that's that's the plan. It won't work without everybody's help and everybody pitching in to try to figure out how to solve those problems. Uh, and that's just contact information if you want it. Now, uh, Dr. Shortell kindly brought these maps that I left her that have those charts with readable dots and lines on them. Uh, that I showed earlier with all the all the colors, and so I can lay them out here on the on the end of the table. So if you have interest in seeing actually what those concentrations are to go down the river, they're much more legible. That's how they originally had them made, and I converted into JPEG. So that's that's my spiel. So those concentrations are they at a certain level of flow, or how you know when do the is that now, about? That would be uh, a question for Megan, who's sitting in the back of the room. <laughs> Concentrations would be taken at a wide range of flows. Typically, the concentrations go down when the flow goes up in the river. So you can kind of see that in the data during wet times, the concentration goes down, drought, the concentration goes back up. So that can kind of help with that interpretation. And I believe on most of these, on most of these water quality plots, they're like one average uh, concentration for the year. You know, from your stations. I think that's did you average it over the entire year. Uh, using our plots or yeah. no, yours. That's playing all the plot and correlating right. the monthly okay. whatever they require. Yeah. Um, <laughs> any other questions? Yeah, I got one that's kind of related to that. Have you looked at the relationship that the NFL is what you're doing? Minimum closing level. Right. 
would have, I think, a connectivity. We hear a lot about getting that done. Uh, yes, yes, we do, and, and I don't know, I think we're helping however we can. Uh, you know, that's, you know, I come, I have to, I, I apologize for this, you know, I come back, I'm the, you know, I'm the water quality guy, you know, here we sit with the water quality and you know, we're, you know, we're looking at it. So. Well, I'm just thinking, you know, if we can make that connectivity and keep it in front of people, it makes it easier to stay on track is all. Uh, so I'll unroll these maps if you have questions like, you know, you're more than welcome to. You know, these are, this is what you were asking questions about. whatever date you have set up. We did have conflict with the October 25th date. That was the date of the State Farm Bureau meeting. I think we're now looking for November, yeah, November yeah. 1st, which is like next Thursday. It's, it's always good to have somebody young that has a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> if that's all, we're going to uh, adjourn. We'll be back in the, about an hour and 10 minutes for our uh,